Blessed, most merciful Heavenly Father, I come before you, Lord, humbly, and I pray, Lord, that you give me the courage, the will, the wisdom, the words to speak that you've given me to speak. I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God did not call me to be popular or to be a millionaire, but God did call me to be faithful. And I am just the dust of the earth, and no one is beneath me. The only thing special about me is that I am forgiven. Oh, and I am God's dirt. When I first started getting tribulation dreams, many of them were so very graphic and, and violent. So much death and destruction, and not like the where you see on a movie, where you know in your mind that it's all not real. And you knew that all the actors were, whether they were dead or dying or injured or alive, at the end of the filming, they would get the paycheck and go home happy. <laughs> uh, these dreams, they were powerful. They were as if they were real. And I would wake up praying and crying. I would cry so hard that I would have tears flowing down my face, down my chest, and they'd form puddles on my lap. I wept bitterly, bitterly on the side of my bed, like when you lose a child, or like if your mother just passed away. I wept that hard. And sometimes my wife would walk on me, bucket on me, and with her being concerned, she would ask, oh, are you okay, what's wrong? And all I could say was, a lot of people who are going to get, are going to get hurt. And I think once I responded, and I, with a, I, I know what's coming. Then the Holy Spirit gave me this, sudden destruction comes. Then a few months later, the Holy Spirit gave me this. Now it's like watching the clock tick, clock tick down to an execution. Hours, if it were not for the sacrifice and the shed blood of Jesus Christ, we all would have a date with the executioner. And just a few days ago, the Holy Spirit gave me this. Praying for America now is like praying for the dead. And you do know why we do not pray for the dead, don't you? The Holy Spirit commanded me to wake up and tell the people, and to that end, I have done all that I have done. I speak, I write letters, articles, books, I make YouTube videos, Facebook, radio, speaking, all of it due to my command from the Holy Spirit to wake up and tell the people. My website is at www.tonylam.org. Recently, the Holy Spirit comes to me in a still small voice and reminds me that our time here is very short. And no matter how loudly the media screams at you that everything is just fine, with these people, that is your sign that things are about to fall apart. When it comes to God, one plus one does not always equal two. And no one will ever be able to put God in a box. But then God gave me these dreams and visions to warn people of what is to come and just how serious all this is. I will trust in God as he has never failed me, nor has, and he has never let me down. He has never forsaken me. God is holy, righteous, and true, and God's word will stand forever. I saw a terrible economic collapse where everything paper collapses and the dollar eventually goes to zero. Now that said, I am not sure if it is a series of massive earthquakes starting in the Cascade area that sets off the San Andreas Fault and then the New Madrid Fault ruptures if that causes the economic collapse or if the economic collapse comes first. Even David Wilkerson had, vis had visions of several massive earthquakes and an economic collapse, but he did not know which came first. Did you ever think that that was a coincidence that David Wilkerson had visions of earthquakes and economic collapse and that I was given dreams of earthquakes and economic collapse? I'm sure that was just a coincidence. Now that you might think that gold and silver will save you, but and, and for a season, they will skyrocket, and, but they will eventually go to zero, as you cannot eat gold, and gold will not keep you warm. If you need more proof, read Ezekiel 7 and 19. So I gave all my silver away to my church, as I would not need it where I was going. Yes, sudden destruction comes to America. The very same God whose wrath was poured out upon Israel without measure is about to pour out a tenfold judgment up, upon America. America has sinned a great sin and has, and has drug or forced other countries into her, into her abominations. So our judgment will be very great. Please read Jeremiah 51 and Revelation 18. Why do you think I wept so bitterly? But now, right now, you can escape all of this coming judgment 
that will soon come upon America. All you have to do is humble yourself before Almighty God, repent of your sins, and invite Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. And no, I cannot promise you that your life will be spared from a calamity, but I promise that your soul will be saved from hell, fire, and damnation. When I wept bitterly, I wept for you, because I have seen what is coming. And no, I don't know the timeline or the order of events, but I do know it is coming. It's bearing down on us. Time is short. Time is oh so short. The rapture is soon, and if you miss the rapture, then you will enter the tribulation with horror that is multiplied many fold. Satan's demons will roam the earth and will inhabit many people, make, making them do unspeakable things. Nephilim will walk the earth, fallen angels will walk the earth as well. God's wrath and fury will be poured out without measure, and Satan's wrath will, will be poured out upon the people as well. And the people <clears throat> will be in the middle. Billions upon billions will die. Now you might say, I serve a loving, kind God who could never ever hurt or harm anyone. To that I say, remember Noah and the great flood of Noah's time where God destroyed every living thing that walked, crawled, or flew upon the earth? Or what about Sodom and Gomorrah? God is a jealous God. God is sovereign. God will do all his pleasure. God is no respecter of men. God does not have to answer to you or me or anyone. God is God. He always was God, and He always will be God, and God will never change. You may change. You may read a different Bible than the King James Bible, where they take out repentance, they take out the blood, they take out sins, they change the meaning of Scripture to suit you or your sinful lifestyle. In that case, you need to back up this video and play the pre previous paragraph again. I am not impressed or interested in material things, as the things of this earth will melt away with fervent heat. I am not impressed or interested in cars, boats, homes, money, none of that impresses me. I seek no treasure upon this earth. My treasure is in heaven. In these last days, what we say and what we do is more important than you could ever imagine. The only thing I desperately want is to be pleasing to God. To please God so much that God one day will just take me as he took Enoch. I pray that you be that pleasing to God also, that, God, that one day God will just take you also. And Bobby and I will look for you on the streets of gold. God bless you. God keep you and yours. Amen. And I don't go anywhere without my, without my Bible. And I leave Bibles everywhere I can. I don't go anywhere without my Bible. Go to restaurants, hospitals, doctor's offices, shopping, everywhere I go. If my Bible is not welcome, then I'm not welcome. And I would never, ever deny Jesus Christ. This is my proof. This and saying the blessing over every meal is my proof, my testimony when I can't speak, that I am a Christian and I will never deny Jesus. And I pray you do likewise. God bless you. God keep you. I pray for every one of you. Amen.